word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification that it may impart grace to the hearers. Last week's video was a little heavy, so let's start today off on a lighter note. Let's start off with a joke, but first let me provide a little background. Our grandson loves telling jokes. Unfortunately, very few of them ever make any sense. And when he was four or five, he went through a phase of joke telling using ill-mannered words. Unfortunately, many of those jokes would come out when he was talking to his great grandmas on FaceTime. Now, though his papa could relate to that kind of childish humor, after one particular joke, he did finally see the need to talk to him. So he sat him down and explained that when speaking to his elders, especially ladies, he needed to control himself and his jokes. So having overcome his impolite speech, for the most part, he debuted a new joke during one Saturday night sleepover. While we were eating dinner, he said, Hey, Mama, I have a joke, and the word poop is not in it. I said, Fantastic, fire away. And then he said, Why did the number 10 cross the road? I thought for a second and I said, Because the number nine told him to. He stared at me with the most disgusted look on his face and said, No, to get to an alphabet concert. Isn't that hilarious? I was like, Buddy, you desperately need a joke book. In Matthew chapter 15, the Pharisees, who were all about outward appearances, are complaining to Jesus about Jesus' disciples' lack of hand washing. So basically, Jesus decides to educate them on what truly defiles a person and tells the Pharisees, but those things which proceed out of the mouth come from the heart, and they defile a man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, and blasphemies. In other words, what goes into a person's mouth, even if it's touched by filthy hands, does not defile them and has no ability to affect the soul. What does defile a person is the sin from within the heart, and our words reveal that sin. For example, and I've told you this is something that I struggle with, loving and praying for those who've hurt me, or really to be more accurate, those who have done or said something to hurt someone I love. If somebody says or does something to me, I get over it pretty quickly, but say or do something to someone I care about, not so quickly. But loving those people is something Jesus commands his followers to do in Matthew chapter 5. Likewise, if we love God, we are commanded to also love our brother. So when I say, I hate that guy, or I'd like to punch him in the face, what comes out of my mouth reveals what is in my heart. Now, do I really hate anyone? And have I ever or would I ever punch someone or want to see anyone hurt or suffer? No. But in the heat of a moment, sometimes I allow my anger to control what comes out of my mouth, and this reveals a problem within my soul. It reveals my sin. So can our words really affect another person in a negative way? Or is the phrase, sticks and stones can break my bones, but names will never hurt me, an accurate phrase? Not accurate at all. Of course our words can affect others negatively and positively. If you've ever had your feelings hurt by something someone said, you know how important words are. And to prove the importance of words, in 2017, a Massachusetts woman was found guilty of involuntary manslaughter after she told her friend to get back into his truck knowing that the cab of his truck was filled with lethal fumes. She listened as he died without calling for help and after the court ruling, a New York Times article quoted an ACLU lawyer's concern for the ruling. The statement read, this is saying that her words literally killed him, that the murder weapon here was her words. That is a drastic expansion of criminal law in Massachusetts. Our words are powerful. They have the ability to build up or tear down, to bless or to curse. And as this Massachusetts woman discovered, Death and life are in the power of the tongue. 
Now, I want to make a distinction here between what the Bible tells us about our words and what the word of faith, name it and claim it, prosperity gospel, and the New Age movement teaches. The Bible tells us that our words do have power. We have the ability through our words to edify or build each other up, like the focus verse says. And on the flip side of that, we have the ability to tear each other down. What we cannot do with our words is speak things into existence, manifesting our thoughts into reality. God alone possesses this ability. Genesis 1-3 tells us, Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And he continues throughout the chapter speaking things into existence. In Isaiah 55 11, God is speaking and says, So shall my words be that go forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. And in the book of Lamentations, the prophet Jeremiah writes, Who is he who speaks and it comes to pass when the Lord has not commanded it? Is it not from the mouth of the Most High that woe and well-being proceed? Only God can speak things into existence. But back to our words. Whether we're speaking to our friends, our children, spouses, co-workers, neighbors, or posting on social media, the words we choose are important. Our words reflect our character, and as Christians, our words reflect Jesus. They aren't just words. James 3.10 states, Out of the same mouth proceed blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. Now, I have no idea who decided which words qualified as curse words, but the fact is, in today's society, there is a generally accepted list of expressions that are considered objectionable. If you'd like to view the directory, go to this website, noswearing.com forward slash dictionary. And I assure you, there is a complete list from A to Z for your viewing displeasure. And regardless of whether you or I find our words objectionable, someone else might. And the use of that word or words could cause them to ask, if Christians speak the same as everyone else, what makes them so different? Now, on a more personal level, many times in the heat of an argument, our words can be vicious, especially with someone we love. Now, how upside down is that? But unfortunately, it's true. And in an effort to win an argument, many times we plunge in the verbal knife and we give it a twist. But Proverbs 15 tells us, a soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. And I'm going to add a little something extra here. If you can't manage a soft answer, don't say anything. Exercising verbal self-control can diffuse an argument that would otherwise explode into a volcano of words that cannot be taken back or forgotten. Now, this has been especially challenging for me because I almost always speak what's on my mind, and at times, I have not really been gentle with my words, especially with my husband. And this is an area where God has really been convicting me. Fortunately, over the last few years, with the help of the Holy Spirit, I've really been trying to think before I speak or just not say anything at all, especially when I'm angry. And King David displayed great wisdom when he wrote the words in Psalm uh, 141.3, set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth and keep watch over the door of my lips. So apparently King David had a problem similar to mine. Now, here's where I actually intended to end my devotional and then yesterday happened. Yesterday, I woke up and I just felt dark. I, I won't get into a lot of deep details about that, but I had a really bad emotional day. And late morning, a friend texted me a song and, and it was a great song. And then I shared with her that I was having a bad emotional day. And she sent another one and she said, now listen to this one. I got really emotional. I started crying, I actually felt a little better, but I was still a mess. And when my husband came home, we talked and we shared with, with each other some things that have been frustrating both of us. And it was a great talk and I felt even a little better after that. But the darkness was still there. It, it just felt like a heavy weight. Then as we were watching TV, there was a little bit of a break and I checked my Facebook page. A complete stranger within a group that I'm a member of commented on something that I posted. And at the end of her comment, she wrote, by the way, I just bought Enter Jesus. 
Now, I was a little confused because I had not shared that I'd even written a devotional on that post, and I asked her how she even knew about it, and this is what she wrote. There are times when the Holy Spirit will highlight someone in a unique way, which prompts me to connect with them. That person was you today, and the Holy Spirit led me to your devotional and then to pray. I'm an intercessory prayer warrior. God is so good. Yes, Kelly, God is so good. Now, my bo- my post was upbeat and positive. There was absolutely no way she could have known what I had been feeling all day yesterday. But God knew, and he led her to pray for me. And her words, along with the edifying words of my friend who texted me earlier, and along with the words from my husband, lifted me out of that darkness. It The darkness just simply went away. Now, it kind of took all day, but still. So whether it's a comment, joke, word said in anger, or an opinion of which we think the entire world must be made aware, we need to use our words wisely. And remember, whoever guards his mouth and tongue keeps his soul from troubles. So next week, I'm going to talk about one of the prophecies the prophet Isaiah made about Jesus, the Messiah. And I'm also going to share a photo that has not been seen by anyone except very close family members since 1974. I only recently showed my daughter who's now 31 and I'll share what she said in response to seeing that photo. It's a mixture of both being sad and hilarious, but in the meantime, please remember to click the like, subscribe and bell notification buttons and feel free to leave any comments or questions you might have below. I hope this video was helpful and causes you to really think about the effect of your the effect that your words have on other people. And until next week, remember God loves you and keep your eyes on Jesus. Thank you so much for watching, listening and just bearing with all of this. Thank you and have a great week.